Hey everyone, uh, Andrew Paul here. I'm going to be talking with you today about a religion known as Falun Gong. Uh, it's also called Falun Dafa, uh, but it's an advanced practice of the Buddhist school of self-cultivation that was founded by a guy named Mr. Li Hongzi. Um, the practice is master in 1992, or at least that was around the time that he started uh, revealing the practices of Falun Gong to the public. Um, basically, Falun Gong is a cultivation system that uses the mind and body at the same time. By cultivation, I mean that you're going to use certain techniques and processes to um, enhance or improve your uh, character or your gong energy, which we will talk about more in a few minutes. Um, Falun Gong is based on um, the foundations of truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance, and utilizing um, those virtues in cultivating mind and body. Uh, the Falun Gong practice begins at a higher plane than uh, Buddhism or Taoism, uh, which would provide an expedient and ideal way for uh, those who have been practicing uh, other cultivation systems for many years but haven't developed um, their level of gong potency or gong energy that they're wanting to achieve. Um, they also believe that when your gong energy um, has reached a certain height, uh, you can attain an imperishable or adamantine body while still in the secular world and Li Hongzi claims that this cultivation technique, the Falun Gong, is uh, superior to all other cultivation systems, Buddhism, Taoism, um, and it's practiced in over 60 countries now with over 100 million followers, which was really surprising to me because I had never even heard of the religion before. Um, so I figured the easiest way to understand Falun Gong and kind of the mindset that some of the believers and followers have would just be to go through uh, the key terms. Uh, so starting out, we're going to talk about a fallen, which is also known as the law wheel. Um, and this is, they see the fallen as a intelligent rotating entity um, that's composed of high energy matter from other dimensions that is rotating constantly 24-7. Um, and this is something that's going to be implanted in the practitioner's abdomen. Uh, the constant rotation of the law wheel is unique to Falun Gong because it, it makes one able to cultivate even when they're not practicing uh, the different mind and body cultivation techniques. Uh, Li Hongzi Hong is quoted as saying that you can receive the, the Falun or the law wheel um, by reading his books, watching his nine session lectures on videos, listening to his nine session lectures on video cassettes or audio cassettes, uh, or studying together with other students of Falun Gong. Um, so the Falun Wheel, when it's rotating inward, uh, is going to provide salvation to the practitioner by absorbing energy from the universe and transforming it into Gong energy. Uh, when it rotates outward, you're providing salvation to others by releasing energy uh, that can save any being, any individual, and rectify any abnormal condition. Uh, so there's pretty uh, strong implications for uh, what Falun Gong is able to do uh, as far as its practices and, and bringing salvation to individuals. <clears throat> and we'll talk about how that plays in more to their uh, worldview in a few in a few minutes. Uh, another term is gong, which is a high form of energy matter that manifests uh, itself in the form of light. And so the simplest way to understand gong is energy. Um, a person's gong is going to be directly influenced by their sing sing, which is their uh, mind cultivation techniques. And so as your character improves or your zing sing, um, your gong energy is going to grow into a pillar and the height of that pillar is going to de 
determine your gong potency or your gong level. Um, so this pillar is said to exist in a deeply hidden dimension that makes it hard for the average person to see, but your gong potency level or the height of your pillar uh, de determines what supernatural abilities you'll have and, um, and the strength of those abilities such as telepathy, precognition, uh, transmuting objects, and things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So we talked about um, Falun Gong being a cultivation of mind and body. The cultivation of the mind aspect of Falun Gong is called Sing Sing. Uh, and basically it's a transformation of virtue and karma um, and is directly related to increasing your Gong potency. Um, cultivation includes being able to put forth great effort uh, improving your awakening capacity, bearing hardships, and enduring almost unendurable th circumstances. Um, the Zen Sing cultivation is going to be grounded in uh, the truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance uh, aspects of Falun Gong, which is really the core of, uh, of their moral uh, and ethical worldview system. Uh, so Zen is going to be truthfulness, and that would be telling the truth, doing things truly, uh, returning to your true self, and ultimately becoming a true being. Sean is going to be compassion, and that's developing great compassion, doing good things, and saving people. And Ren, which is forbearance, would be exercising self-restraint, uh, minding your character, and not taking harsh rations. Uh, so they bring all three of those, Zen, Sean, and Ron, truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance uh, together in mind cultivation techniques such as practicing loss and gain, uh, which would be losing your attachments to uh, the world around you, whether it's prestige, prosperity, your standard of living, money, comfort, uh, those things and the mindsets that go along with them, losing your attachments to those things. And they also do this through ridding oneself of jealousy uh, and eliminating karma, <clears throat> which you can eliminate karma by performing exercises uh, that cultivate your character, which are the Sing Sing exercises. The body aspect of the body cultivation aspect of Falun Gong uh, is known as Qigong uh, and that's seen in other um, cultivation methods or cultivation method religions as well such as Buddhism and Taoism um, and these strengthen the practitioner's supernatural abilities and energy mechanism. Their physical exercises kind of a lot like stretching um, they also help develop many living entities in the practitioner bodies, um, but they do, Falun Gong does note that the Sing Sing, the mind cultivation, takes priority over Qigong, the physical exercises. One of the appealing things uh, for Falun Gong is they only have five different sets of movements for their Qigong exercises. Uh, four of them are standing exercises and one is a sitting meditation um, but it makes it a lot more practical for uh, people wanting to learn Falun Gong because there's only five different exercises that you're going to be practicing um, as compared to uh, Buddhism and Taoist cultivation techniques where there's a plethora of different exercises that are um, being used. Um, so the Falun Gong worldview um, basically sees the planet that we're living on uh, as something that has been destroyed many times uh, and after every time after the planet's destroyed it's regrouped and then humankind starts to multiply again. Um, the master Hongzi says that we're living in the last days of the last havoc uh, which is the last of three phases of evolution of the universe. Um, so he really sees that we're living kind of compared to biblical uh, biblical understanding of eschatology would be the end times um, which is where 
their understanding of the fallen producing salvation comes into play that uh, Lee Hongzi believes that this fallen that he's implanting into you is bringing salvation not only to yourself but to other people uh, during end time situations. Uh, another aspect of Falun Gong I think is important to understand are um, the ideas of virtue and karma. Uh, virtue, that they also call day, is going to be viewed as a white substance that is cultivated by practicing the sensing techniques, the mind cultivation techniques. Uh, and virtue is transformed into gong energy, which ultimately increases your supernatural abilities and uh, the amount of energy or salvation that you are receiving or giving to other people. Uh, karma is viewed as a black substance. You um, create karma when you behave badly, and you can also accumulate it from past lives. Um, it can also be passed on from relatives, ancestors, and friends. And it is the primary factor that causes sickness in people. Um, but they also believe that you can eradicate karma by zingzing exercises, by the cultivation of your mind. Um, and <coughs> excuse me, Li Hongzi says that when one throws a punch at someone else, he also throws out his white substance, so that is his virtue. To the other person and the vacated area in his body is filled with the black substance that is karma um, this is important when you look at the persecutions that go on against falun gong specifically in china um, when people are out uh, doing peaceful protests uh, falun gong practicers are out doing peaceful protests they welcome persecution because they believe that they are um, receiving that other person's uh, virtue, the white substance, and that they're eradicating karma from themselves when they're being physically uh, persecuted against. So some of the different counseling approaches that I thought would um, be beneficial for somebody who's practicing Falun Gong are um, CBT and existential therapy. Uh, existential therapy therapy means mainly because um, Falun Gong believers are constantly in a state of transformation. They're increasing their gong or karma, performing self-investigation and taking responsibility uh, for their change through Sing Sing and Qi Gong cultivation. Um, this kind of lines up with existential therapy. Um, sorry, one second. My dog is going crazy. Winston, come on, over here. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, so existential therapy um, is related to Falun Gong would be um, beneficial because existential therapy uh, focuses on people constantly changing or uh, sees that people are constantly changing, that they're responsible for their choices to make the change or not to change, um, which places the focus on the individual and their present feelings and circumstances. Um, but really, I felt like CBT uh, would be a little more beneficial because it's um, focusing primarily on the relationship between the individual's thought process and their behavior. Um, I thought this would be helpful uh, with followers of Falun Gong because the therapist would be able to help the client set goals that increase their sensing, their mind cultivation, and their qigong which would be their behavior um, and that's going to be a primary focus of a falun gong um, falun gong follower is to uh, increase their mind and um, behavior through sing sing and qigong exercises uh, so i really felt like a therapist using cpt would be able um, 
to make a treatment plan with them that incorporates uh, these different exercises and really helps them to look at what's going on within their thought process um, that could be uh, changed or eliminated uh, to help them increase their uh, gong potency. Um, thank you guys for listening to this brief overview of Falun Gong, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you.